Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video is going to be focusing on a recent question I received on another video. And that question revolved around how can you count the number of months um, that appear in a range? So to sort of be more specific with this question, you can see we have a list of um, dates and obviously those dates are varying from being the first of the month, the fifth, the 20th, yeah, so varying days within that month as well. And the question was asking what formula would allow you to be able to count how many times the month of February, for argument's sake, appeared in this range. So we can see that the month of February has got a three uh, entries or three dates, the, the first, the fifth, and the 20th. So the result we'd want to return is the number three. Alternatively, if we're looking for how many times did the month of June appear, then we can see the month of June appears here twice. Uh, it's all in month order, so it's quite clear to see that one. Uh, we can see it appears twice. So the re result we'll be looking for there is the number two. So what we'll do is we'll just jump straight into it and uh, show you the formula and try and explain the best we can, obviously, how the formula works. So what we'll be using this time is a function called sum product. And what that allows us to do is obviously you know, within that sum product, apply the logic we, we require to count the months, and then sum product will do the math or the, uh, the sum to obviously give us the return of that count total. So what might be easier is if we just jump ahead, and there's a, a false uh, calculation there already, if we just jump ahead and enter the uh, formula, then you'll have what you need, and then we'll try and talk through them, obviously that formula and how it works. So as mentioned, we're going to be using some products. So we we'll go equals some um, products, and then the first part we need to do, and again we'll explain this towards the end, is we've got a double dash followed by a couple of open brackets, and then this is the part we'll probably um, see most logical uh, or most clear, shall I say? So we're going to use then now the month function. So we're going to use that and then open the brackets. And our dates uh, that we're interested in go from row 8 down to row 17. So we're just going to be very specific and select that um, range. I'm also going to just lock that range as well by using F4. We'll close brackets. Uh, so at this point, we can see that this is the test, obviously, we're looking for month. So we want to know the month of this range. And obviously, what some product is going to allow us to do is like, obviously iterate through each of those rows uh, one at a time. And the first thing we want to test for, let's say we'll go for the month of May. So the first one I, my eyes drew to there is in row 12. So we're going to do where month equals uh, five so that the number that represents may be number five and then we're going to do a few closed brackets as well and then probably worth me entering this make sure it works just before i start explaining the formula that i've not entered correctly so we can see we've got the result of one so to quickly test that and make sure it, our formula is working let's go for the example of june so we can see that rows 13 and 14 here so all i'm going to do is go into the formula and change this value to the number six hit enter and you can see we've now got the result of two let's just do one more quick test so we've got the month of february here let's change that to uh, the number two for february yet yeah, we're getting three and then a final test let's just change this one here to another date let's go for a random date 20th of february 2021 yeah you can see as that date was entered our formula has also captured that as well at this point, it's also worth mentioning that obviously everything in here is fairly static, including the month we're trying to refer to. So what I could probably do up here, let's say, let's go for the month of April, we could change this. So actually, rather than hard coding it in, we just refer to this up here, hit enter, and yeah, we can see there's nothing for April. Uh, but if we go for July, so we change this to the number of seven, then yeah, you can see it's now updated as well. So really quick on the fly there, you can obviously hard code your month into here, else if you want to obviously have it dynamic so you can literally keep changing, as I was doing in my examples there, then obviously you can refer that to a certain range that contains your month number. So to try and explain this function in a bit more detail, so ultimately what we're doing, or the, not the crucial part, but the key part here is we're ultimately saying we're interested in obviously the month. So what it will do is it will look at this range and for each row, it will return what that month number is. If you're not familiar with the month um, function, all it simply does, and I can show you now here quickly, is if you go equal month and then select one of these dates, 
you can see it's just going to return the integer value uh, for the corresponding month of the date we've selected. So obviously that's what you can what's happening within the formula. So it's obviously for each of the rows, it's going to return what that month number is. <clears throat> and our criteria is it must equal, in this example, the number seven. And then what our sum product allows us to do is to go through, it will um, sort of say record each of those um, instances where the criteria is matched within this array. And then obviously it will then do a total count uh, for all of those in there as well. What gives us obviously the result of three. One of the questions we often get around some product is why do you have the double dash at the front here? Uh, and simply what it is doing is it's converting a list of booleans, so it's like true or false values, uh, to zeros and ones. So what do I mean by that? So ultimately what's happening here first is our logic is saying, okay, for each row is the month equal to number seven. And obviously what that's going to do is return a true or false. If it's true, then obviously great, it meets our criteria. If it's false, then we ignore it and move on. But what we want to do is we don't want to return a true or, a true or false. We want that true or false to be converted to a number. So obviously number one or a zero. And then what happens is once we've got a list, actually probably another, another visual representation might be probably useful in this scenario. So we're looking for the month of July. So what our formula is doing by going through each row and identifying if this is true, it's first going to go through and say, are all these true or false? So for the majority of them, it's going to be false. And I can copy that down into this. Uh, but obviously, these bottom ones are going to be true because obviously they meet the month criteria of July. So the first part that happens for this statement here is it's basically going down all of our rows and saying, OK, tell me true or false if that, that um, date is equal to, or the month of that date is equal to the one we require, and it will basically go down and create an array of all these values for true and false. Because obviously we can't really work with true or false in this scenario, what we need to do is convert all these trues and falses to ones and zeros. So again, in essence, what's gonna happen here is the next part by doing this uh, double negative here, is it's going to go and convert all of these to, uh, I don't know, we've got zero percent there, but let's go with it. Zero, zero, not double zero. Uh, da, 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 if it helps if I put the zeros in. And then this would be a one, one, one. Let's change that back to a number. What's now going to mean it's wrong as well. So let's go zero, zero. God, that's what you get for doing stuff on the fly. Get rid of that and just get rid of all those as well. So we can then see, we get there eventually, what's happened now. So all our trues and falses have been converted to ones and zeros, and then all our sum product needs to do is now sum all of these results within that array. When it does a sum of this, obviously it's then gonna give us, if you can uh, probably see that down the bottom of my screen, uh, you can give us the result of the number three, what we've returned here. And in a natural I say, but that turned out to be quite a long-winded example of how this function works. But in the most shortest terms, if you're trying to count the number of times a month appears within a range, then this is the formula that you need to achieve that as well. So if you did enjoy that video, please don't forget to smash the like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me because it shows uh, the content that you'd potentially like to see more of, but it also helps that all important YouTube algorithm for ensuring that more people find these videos. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, or if this is your first time checking out one of the videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of more videos uh, as and when they come out. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.